Yes, here we are. Same gay time, same gay place at Gay Detroit Radio. Yes, I'm James D. And welcome back. It's Friday night at 9 p.m. We've got lots to talk about as usual. Uh, yes, as we know, um, now marriage and equality is equal for everyone. But yet, oh God, the hate still keeps on coming. We've got, um, let's see now, hate crime in New York where... Um, they go, Jenna fags, and it's spray-painted on a gay couple's home. We shall be talking about that. Calvin Klein has now stepped into the ads featuring same-sex couples. And this is good. A bishop who voted against marriage, marriage equality, sorry, uh, comes out as gay. Hmm. And then, is America ready for a gay disabled character on TV? Well, you know what? I think we'll soon find out. I'm James Dean. You listen to Gay Detroit Radio. Don't forget you can hear us every Friday at 9 p.m. on www.radio-op.com. Have a little song now. One of my songs, and it's called In My Dream. seen the face in love I'm living inside my dreams is what I get I'm dreaming my life away I'm dreaming to be with you I'm dreaming of yesterday when our love was so
Welcome back. A little song called In My Dreams. We usually try to keep it to local artists. And uh, we've got some very talented artists. A little bit later, we're going to be uh, listening to Nikki Holland and Xander and Jeff Goot. And we'll see what else tickles our fancy. Now, as I was saying earlier, uh, there's a bishop who voted against gay marriage equality, or should I say just marriage equality, has now come out as gay. I was a coward. Another sin for which I needed forgiveness. That's Kevin Canoos, Bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church. Why do they have such long names? Is a church. So 60 years ago when the Evangelical Lutheran Church considered reforms that would have liberalized its acceptance of gays and allowed its clergy members to bless the weddings of same-sex couples. Bishop Kevin Canoos voted no. I voted no, and I feel incredibly torn. I was afraid, and I was afraid that I would have to defend my decision to vote yes in the congregations, that I would be strongly opposed to gays and lesbians persons. It was safe for me to hide behind a no vote. I was a coward, another sin for which I needed forgiveness. Okay, um, cowardly is, that. that's nothing. No, 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 no. A lying fucking idiot is exactly what you need forgiveness for. But who am I to judge? <laughs> also, going to hate grabs. Now, um, as the... Um, New trend um, for uh, the, the, the not the new trend I should say, but now the new publicity for uh, Caitlin. Um, now along comes the hatred with it. Um, at first, I was rather skeptical of uh, Caitlin. I mean, first of all, you've got Bruce Jenner, who's the iconic male American superstar athlete. And then all of a sudden you have Caitlin, this very sophisticated, beautiful, older woman. Um, like I said, at first I was skeptical because of the reality show that everybody's associated with this. And uh, I watched uh, this uh, the other night and I was quite impressed, especially when uh, she was talking to her mother and um, Kanye or Kimye came along and... Then there was his sister, and and it was uh, and what he's trying to do now, uh, to help uh, the struggling teenage youth because of the high amount of suicides that are actually um, in the transsexual community, and that's even after transitions, uh, some can be as high as forty percent in suicide. So we really, really do need to help our transgender friends as well. Uh, a same-sex couple in New York had their house uh, vandalized with Jenna fags sprayed across the outside. Um, it's like you think your initial um, reaction, gut reaction, would be like, oh, God, I fear for my life. But really, you know, the guy who actually had this done to him says... Um, I kind of feel sorry for the person who did this and felt it was necessary to, to destroy somebody's house. Um, you see, actually, he has got the right attitude on this, mainly because I think, personally, um, I've been out since I was um, 18. I sort of didn't come out the closet. I sort of blasted open those fucking closet doors and said, Wow! So, <laughs> and it's like I've never been, I've never, actually maybe a couple of times I've had a time when I thought, oh, maybe I've just, um, I'm in trouble here. But um, usually, and I've been around a while, uh, I've been pretty much respected, so um, I'm very lucky in that department. Um, but usually cowards never show their heads anyway. You know, they're the kind of people who will key your car. You know, they will throw things, throw stones through your windows. They'll leave indiscriminate anonymous messages. So these are the kind of people that you're dealing with. Uh, there are people who actually are um, prone to violence, and which is the transgender um, situation at the moment. Um, but unfortunately, since uh, the advent of equality in everybody's lives at the moment, um, the... Uh, 
the violence has spiked a little. And unfortunately, that's going to keep a while because then people eventually are going to come around to this way of thinking like, you know, each for all and just live and let live. Um, I think and hope that that's going to happen very shortly, although the black community will obviously advise me and say, hell no, <laughs> you're in for a long ride. So, um, you know, so for our black brethren as well, Thank you for your support in many, many ways. We really do support. Uh, thank you, uh, especially from the Martin Luther King tribe as well. Thank you. Um, also, now, is America ready for a gay disabled character on TV? Mm. Now, when Ryan O'Connell blogs on Thoughts Catalog first blew up, it was because he was obsessed, like a lot of us, about finding a way to live a life that feels good, sitting on a patio at the Pally House Hotel in West Hollywood. In a recent May afternoon, O'Connell says, The truth is, at that time, I was miserable and full of sabotage. I basically hate myself, uh, pushing up his glasses uh, with his index finger. And, you know, but the, he's actually showing his anxieties. Uh, about being 24, being gay, f being, figuring how to be an adult. And also, um, he suffers from cerebral palsy. So, cerebral, 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 sorry, I do apologize, cerebral palsy. And um, with the help of Jim Parsons, which we all know who he is, and uh, it is going to try and have a character with that. So, let's have some music. Um... I'm going to talk, let's have a little bit of a um, good old friend of mine, Nikki Holland. I really do love that girl. Very, very talented girl. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm James D. And you listen to Gay Detroit Radio. You can listen to us on www.radio-op.com. Also, you can get, if you want to get in contact with us, it's um, gaydetroitradio at gmail.com. I'll just go to the website, gaydetroitradio.com. Then we're at Twitter, which is Gay Detroit Radio. Facebook, which is Gay Detroit Radio. And it just is so simple. Ah, oh, a little bit of Nicky. Watch me in the corners. Corners of your eyes You're dancing here, that's why I came I strip you naked In these pictures in my mind My needs, my wants are hard to tame Now I want to run to you Pick you up between your thighs just to hear you gasp and speak my name. Why do we run? Why do we hide? Why must I be your secret? You come back to hold on, you lock me inside. Just to hear you. As your hips beneath me rise Let's dance a way you've never seen I want to creep in you Open the depth of you inside Surrounded by the musk of you and me You saturate me With the pleasure in your cry I won't let go until you scream Why do we run? Why do we hide? Why must I be your secret? You come back to hold on you Lock me inside And when your eyes, your nose, your legs, your head your fingernails on in you You can go away Keep it down Keep it down Keep it down From a suit tell no one Play along with all the lies If 
You'll say that later we can meet And I'll keep your secret From the public scornful eyes If that's what it takes to get relief Just know that one day I'll lay it out to your surprise They don't really care It's what you perceive Why do we run? Why do we hide? Why must I be your secret? You come back Yes, the sound there of my girl, yes, the good old Nikki Holland, still one of my favorite girls around. She is wonderful, very talented, and uh, a very good musician. Now, this is actually sort of um, not quite frivolous, but could be this section, because uh, there's a couple of things in here that actually, which will in later items, um, you will think, wow. But um, unfortunately... um, (laughs) I'm not going to jump usually on other people's bandwagons, but this one actually got me a little ticked. Because apparently um, on the Bill Cosby um, bandwagon, by now I think, what was it, about 30, 36, 37 of his um, victims were on one of the magazines. Well, Bill Cosby got a queer teen banned from TV for behaving inappropriately. Wouldn't he accept the quaaludes? This is the question. Uh, No, I was not sexually bothered by Bill Cosby. We met because he was was curious about me. Uh, My son, Society Child, was climbing the charts. Oh, sorry, his song, Society Child, was um, climbing the charts. Do you know, I've got a new prescription on my glasses, and sometimes I have to squint, and even then I don't get the word right. So my song, Society Child, was climbing the charts and creating a great deal of controversy. Uh, The Smothers Brothers took a huge gamble and had me in their hit television show, uh, I was just 16 years old when we taped it. Uh, I'd been on the roads for months doing press-ons and one-nighters and chaperones and tour managers and families, friends, and six or seven years old or so. Everybody was like looking after this 16-year-old and was doing everything in his power to make sure that uh, her power was uh, he was being protected as much as possible. Now remember, I was 16. Uh, I was in high school, very, very naive, including a, about my own sexuality. Anyway, so a month along the road, and then we'd been expecting a big time taping. We had no idea what to have from an early interview. This goes on and on and on. But apparently he um, had a little grope with somebody, and um, the rest is history because uh, Mr. Bill Cosby thought he was all totally, totally inappropriate. Maybe because there was no quaaludes involved again. Okay, so now <clears throat> let's go to the Mormon Church because, as you know, the ba- Boy Scouts uh, of America but I've had the nose fixed this week and the teeth will not work. <clears throat> um, as you know, the Boy Scouts of America, they lifted the ban on gay adults this week. And uh, the Mormon Church is really deeply, deeply troubled at this decision. Um, the Church of the Church of the Jesus Christ of the Latter Day Saints has issued a statement saying it is deeply troubled at the ban and uh, lifting the ban of openly gay adults in the Scouts of America. 
Hmm. Now, the governing councils now are very sort of away from their offices, but can I just remind the Church of Jesus Christ, of the Latter-day Saints, that your founder, one of your founders, Joseph Smith, who was murdered in a lynching somehow, a mob, a mob outbreak in 1894 or something like that, and um, he actually had 40 wives. So, maybe I should join this church. I'm just thinking this. I'm going to rethink this, mainly because if I join the church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints, does that mean I can have 40 husbands? Yay! Oh my God, look at the fucking diamonds I'm going to get. A Porsche, a Corvette, a nice big house. Nagging, more nagging. Testosterone, stubbornness. Oh no, 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 no. I'll just keep to the one I've got. <laughs> Stubborn enough, trust me. <laughs> All right, yes. So uh, that's the Mormons. And they're deeply concerned about... <sighs> Openly gay men and boy scouts. Well, I'd rather they were actually openly gay. Because it's the people with furtiveness that you, you know when people don't look you in the eye and you think, hmm, I never trust anybody who does not look me in the eye. Ever. Now, do you like having sex in public? Because apparently exhibitionism may be far more common practice than you actually think. I have no idea what they're talking about. English guy here. We don't like sex. We don't like booze. <laughs> what the fuck am I kidding? We love it all. Oh, please. Anyway, so taking risks can be sexy when it comes to sex specifically. And those risks can be uh, can take to a variety of forms. And one of the most popular choices seems to be taking sex out of the bedroom and into the street. Hmm. Do you know, i tell you something, and uh, this is really true. Uh, I've lived in a lot of cities, and uh, the past, like, 20-odd years, I lived in New York. And I had a wonderful radio show called uh, Radio Gay Today. Award-winning. Not that I'm name-dropping, but I am. And uh, I really did enjoy it. I came over here to uh, retire. I got so bored and so pissed off with the laws, but now that's been changed. But I'm still not retiring because I'm a mouthy queen. So fuck it. Get over it. Get a grip. Get a life and deal with it. Anyway, so, but I found that, because I'm a country boy at heart, and I've lived in the countryside in, in certain areas, in certain towns, in certain countries, in certain places. And I am not trying to sort of be judgmental. But my God, you country folk, you're horny, 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 perverted little fuckers. Really. I mean, you really are. I mean, and I'm not talking about just with the animals. No, 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 no. Anyway, um, I think we should move on from this. Definitely. <laughs> and a survey here actually says that 50% of gay pride attendees are heterosexual. Well, bugger me. Well, maybe later. Um, yes, according to the Pink News in the UK, uh, the survey was conducted by researchers at the University of Gothenburg during last year's Pride Festival in Stockholm, Sweden. And uh, apparently, they really, honestly, find that uh, it really down to, uh, like, six out of the ten people were actually women. And uh, four of the ten were heterosexual. So, really, <sighs> actually, that could round to sort of four out of ten. Well, that's 40%, not 50 but it says, um, you know, but then again, maybe the, the the percentage of the women was straight as well. So I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I can actually see that because um, I used to go to the one in New York quite a few times. And uh, then it just got really, really ballistic. You're talking about like nearly a million people. And it was just completely, ah. Uh, 
I mean, it was just like, no, I'm staying at home. I'll watch it on the TV. And uh, one thing I did find, though, um, about here, I was very disappointed at the support over here for the Detroit Pride. The Ferndale Pride got something, but they said, you know, um, the Detroit Pride, uh, well, they're expecting, you know, like 30,000 people. Shit, that's not a Pride. That's a fucking street fair. Get a grip, Detroit. My God. Anyway, so, uh, yes, but they do say that 50% is around, around 50% anyway, are actually straight. And a lot of people do want to see uh, how other people are. You know, people regard it as another culture. Uh, people regard it as another lifestyle. And, but a lot of people come away happy and um, not as judgmental. So maybe it's an educational thing. I do. Let's have a little bit of Xander, uh, another one of my favorite um, singers, uh, another Detroiter or Michigander, and uh, he is called, and I do like the, the title of this song, it's called um, Bathtub of Gin. Ooh, how about a bathtub of sin? Hmm, I'll be right back. Rambling in the back room, gambling in the smoke room The cop is in the alleyway, they're coming up the back seat She asked me what I want to drink, I ask me if she ever thinks She looked at me like she knew me when she walked away, she gave a wink I don't know your name, but please just let me in Drinking from a paint can, chasing down a mailman, swinging from a tree branch, swinging from a ceiling fan. Learn me what I never know, take me where I never go. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't tell them where the water go. I can't see your face, but you look just like my kin. This potion's got me all mixed up. Walking on a sand dune, looking like a dry bruise. She says she loves my music, but I'm always singing out of tune. I'll take it as a compliment on every single continent. I can now like an alley cat, my silence is my dominant. I could never read, but baby, I can't sing. Oh, come on over to my place for worth that better gym. Oh, I'm a bum, bum, bum. Hey, that's not a good time. Take me down the boot camp, lick me like an old stamp. Whip me back up in the shape and shake me like a leg cramp. Tell me that you wish me dead, slap me right upside the head. Chew me up and spit me out, there's no one that I'd rather win. Baby, I can't lose because I was born to win. So what if I'm an outlaw getting rich out there to Yeah, it's a wonderful sound there of Xander and a bathtub of gin. Reminds me of the old words, or I should say words, of um, W.C. Fields. Uh, this is a never drink water because fish fucking it. I really now I'm going to have a vodka. <laughs> Now, here's something that's different. A Baptist minister is demanding his First Amendment right to bully gay teens. It is not a hatred or bias to lovingly point out that the harms of homosexuality and the power of Christ to change lives should be the occasion to require it. That's Liberty Council Chairman. Matt Stave. I just really don't. <laughs> I love you, so I'm going to kick the fucking crap out of you. I mean, come on. Uh, dear. So, it just. Uh, David Wells, the minister of Pleasant View Baptist Church, there's not a thing pleasant there at all in uh, McKady. Excuse me, uh, Kentucky, who volunteered at the Warren 
uh, Warren County Regional Juvenile Detention has had his privileges revoked because he refused to sign an agreement to abide by policy 912. Uh, Minister Wells has retained the right-wing Liberty Council, which is threatening to the use of Warren uh, County Juvenile Justice. Department does not change its policy regarding the LGBTQI youth and reinstate Mr. Wells. I, uh, policy 912 is basically to protect the rights of us and the children and everything but now he's trying to invoke his rights that because he's a minister a man of God um, has the right to disagree with your sexual orientation and try beat the shit out of you to make you straight the God I know doesn't want that and then the Catholic Church rears its ugly head once again. Um, a bishop has determined that a 21 trans man may not serve as a godparent of his nephew. Here we go again. Uh, a bishop... Oh, good God. Alec Salinas appeared to... Um, appeal to... Bishop Rafael Zonosa, after he'd been told by the local priest that he would not be able to godfather his nephew because he does not live in accordance with the Catholic faith. I would think like 90% of people in this world don't live in accordance to the Catholic faith, and yet they can still become godparents. Um, I just, this is just, you know, people are saying that, you know, po Pope um, Francis of Assisi, um, and I mean Assisi, um, are saying, you know, he's now the, you know, the, the, the rolling front of the churches, and he is the head of the ship. He knows what's going on everywhere, and it's... I just, I am so pissed off with people thinking that they can do whatever they want, say whatever they want, and just say, fuck you to everybody else's rules. You know, it's just, this is exactly how it is. It really is. It's just totally, totally disgusting. Now, if you remember last week, um, telling you about the gay pastor who was fired for being gay in his congregation in Michigan. Uh, he doubled the congregation and then got fired because, oh, you're gay, but they actually hired him knowing he was gay. <sighs> Reverend Benjamin Hutchinson and his partner Monty Hutchinson married last week in the at the in the pair's home of state, Michigan. Home state of Michigan. Do you know, I think I really need <laughs> a drink. <laughs> my oh my god, my mouth is just not working at all today. So, around 30 fellow clergy members, uh, in defiance of the denomination's state beliefs on homosexuality, and a hundred other guests attended. And after apparent complaint was made to the Methodist ch uh, church leaders this month that Hutchinson was called in by church officials, officials last week and asked to if he had a male partner and was immediately terminated. Um, once again... The hypocrisy. You know, somebody said to me, you know, oh, well, you know, Leviticus says, well, you know, well, he does say man who lies with man. I said, listen, come here, you tart. Let's go back to Leviticus time. In Leviticus time, it was all about property and ownership. And a lot of the uh, rules in the Bible sh uh, Bibles are actually by properties and ownerships. And believe it or not, um, the Catholic priests at one time could get married until about 700 years ago. But when the um, male partners died, um, the women kept on to the property. Well, the church didn't like that. No, 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 no. So... Uh, <laughs> So in Leviticus time, <clears throat> let's face it, the woman then was a slave. She couldn't vote. So she was actually traded by her father for land, a cow, a goat, and possibly a plucked chicken. Whereas her virginity was the contract. 
Then she was virtually tied to the bedroom, tied to the kitchen, and did everything. The man produced the air and the spare, and in those days they needed like about ten spares because everybody died every other minute. Uh, so therefore, she was just a birthing machine who actually cooked meals and played with man's penis and had to enjoy it. So that was in Leviticus times. So what they were saying is when men, man lies with man, it was saying that man should not treat a man like another woman. It should be treated equal. So therefore, they had love and compassion and embraced each other's love. He wasn't treated like a slave, unless it was nobody else knew about it. But it was, you know, it's, it's down to schematics you know he says she says and how you want to read it but in those days you know if you really want to go back into the tradition of marriage that means ladies you can't vote anymore you can't go out on friday nights and now do whatever you want you can't take the pill you can't go out and screw you can't do this you can't have a job you can't tell men to fuck off so that is the real tradition of marriage, which the conservatives really think that you should be grateful for to be a slave to a man and adore his penis. But that's another game. Let's have some music. I'm James D. And you listen to a bit of... Let's have Jeff Goot and Bitter Sweet. A child gets tainted every day And of all the things we love There's that much more to hate Broken promises are all that we can get From the politicians that allow us to live In hope, in pain
something like that. The wonderful sound there of Jeff Good and Bittersweet. Now, Gay History has a first. Um, it's actually going to be played, or should I say played, or actually taught. And it's a Gay History class, a first in a public San Francisco high school. A new college prepar- the preparatory, the pre- the preparate it. Oh, they do it, for God's sake. A preparatory course. <laughs> Can I borrow somebody else's teeth, please? Mine are not working. Um, in San Francisco, high school will focus on a gay right, right movement. I swear, I'm as sober as a judge. I really do. Uh, the AIDS crisis and the lives of lesbian and gay, bisexual, trans, and la, 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 da, da, so Stonewall rights. Anyway, everything that's been going on in the past uh, God knows how many years in the LGBT history. And I think they'll actually put in a little bit of um, Quentin Crisp in there as well. Do you know that one? Quentin Crisp? Yeah. Colin Farrell will be the best man at his gay brother's wedding. Uh, Colin Farrell will be the best man at his brother's wedding uh, next year once gay marriage is legislation is passed. Um, the Hollywood actor also played best man t- at his older brother's civil union uh, ceremony in 2009, but he regretted not coming back to Ireland to celebrate um, the gay marriage uh, referendum. Do you know, really, you know, when family support you like that, it just makes it all worthwhile. Colin Farrell, I mean, he's just an, he's an icon in the acting world, really, really good. And uh, to support your family like that, it's a wonderful thing. Some people say, oh, it's no problem. But then you've got other families who go, Ugh. It's like when I had in my family, you know, it's like, say, it was okay to have the, um, the fucking faggots in New York. And we'd come over there and have wonderful vacations and not have to spend a penny. But when we came over here, it was like, well, do you have to be so loud? Loud my ass. Get out, get a job, and stop poncing off your mother, please. Moving on. Now, this is like, I honestly, the log cabin Republicans. Talk about shooting yourself in the foot. A Republican group that advocates for the LGBT rights has indicated that it might not endorse a sweep. Oh, excuse me. A sweeping new Equality Act, i.e. the Republicans currently control both houses of Congress and last year blocked the Employment Discrimination Act, that was ENDA, which included vital protections to the LGBT workers uh, from coming to a vote. However, Amid the building momentum following the SCOTUS uh, rulings on same-sex marriage, over 100 Democrats have co-sponsored a new bill known as the Equality Act, which could outlaw discrimination and ensure a range of protections for LGBT people. LGBT people. Now, funny enough, I don't know how it's going yet, but I think there was some little act passed in Michigan recently, and I missed it. And um, But you could actually get married in the morning and get fired in the afternoon, because you can still apparently get fired for being gay in Michigan and a few other states as well. So uh, we still have these prehistoric um, monsters known as uh, politicians in uh, Michigan. You know, shitty Schneider. And shitty shooty. I mean, you know, they were sitting on the fence and saying, well, you know, we have protecting constitutional rights of the people. Bollocks. That's all I say, you know. Let's see, what shall we do? Oh, let's have some Cullen Blue, shall we? And um, we'll come back because it's virtually near the end of the show, so it's going to be the last segment. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm James D. You're listening to Gay Detroit Radio on www. Dot radio dash dot com. Don't forget, if you want to contact us, please do. You can go to gaydetroitradio at gmail.com, gaydetroitradio.com, gaydetroitradio at Twitter, gaydetroitradio at Facebook. So you can even Google 
Gay Detroit Radio. And I think I'm I'm the top one on the Google page for gayness in this area. Ha! What can I say? Let's have some music. Color Blue and Rex Tremendous. What you title a king Man full of generosity Power in his eyes Strength in his voice Strength in his eyes For his excellency When he appears virtually In front of your eyes With all of his might With all of his strife You'll see at the beauty within Every smile, every laugh, every grin Deep in your souls Bathing in hope Bathing in love It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, and um, I really, really do enjoy this show. I hope you do, too. Um, we're going to be ending with one of my songs. I started with one of mine, so I'm going to end up with one of mine. And it's actually the theme tune of the show, and it goes on for a few little minutes, so I'm going to end up with that. But actually, I'm going to end up with some uh, pretty good news, actually. Um, this is <laughs> Homophobes Beware! You do not want to cross little Leslie Jordan. Now, the pint-sized Will and Grace star reportedly threw a hot cup of coffee at a group of men yelling gay obscenities in a Westwood holiday Starbucks yesterday. Um, Leslie is one of my favorite actors, mainly because he is so camp. He's, 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 he's as camp as Pink Ink. He is so wonderful. And um, there's that um, Sordid Lives, which uh, Rue McCannon, she died, unfortunately, um, whilst filming there. And uh, that is a real, really funny, funny show. And uh, Leslie has been in so many things, and he's just so wonderful. <laughs> he really is. But don't get him pissed off. Um the pint sized Will and Grace star reportedly threw a hot copy at a group of men who were yelling anti gay obscenities. And uh, related Bianco del Rio and Andore de Lona star in a new Starbucks ad. And uh, three men, eight, rending from ages to 18 to 23, entered the Starbucks on Santa Monica Boulevard and shouted, You'll die, you fucking faggots. It was all sort of scary and unexpected. But apparently our little hero sort of threw the copy and said, Get out of my house! 
Good for him. I just get out my gun. <laughs> you want to just make my day, please. I'll make my day. Even whatever. Uh, Calvin Klein once again, and now I, t- I told you earlier that I'd be talking. They're jumping in on the old gay ads, and um, the images shot by Mario Sorrente uh, features same sex couples for the first time and are being overlaid with sex conversations. That's rather an um, unusual way of saying things. Overlaid. Can one be overlaid? Being laid over, but being overlaid. Hmm. It's like you're saying that. Um, just a minute. <laughs> oh, do you know this always happens? There we go. Sorry about that. I'm not going to edit this out because I'm just nearly finishing the show. So it's just that once in the modelling stages where, you know, I'd rather be looked over than overlooked. And also, the last but not least, a business that really, really is very excited about going out of business. And that's the freedom to marry. Yes, the freedom to marry is going out of business and everybody is totally excited about it and totally thrilled. And as they should be. They've done many years of fighting, many years of um, advocacy, just like me. So, um, and Michael Sabatino and his his husband, Robert Voorhees, and mine as well. So, it's good. So, I'll see you next week. I'm James D. And see you. Bye now.
Look to 